Good afternoon. We want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I know um, I can see that some people are still coming online right now as I'm speaking. But this recording will be recorded. Uh, this webinar will be recorded so all of you can um, come back and review the information later. But welcome to our webinar titled Using GWIS Curriculum with Fidelity. We've got a lot to go over this afternoon and we've got folks from all over the country which um, I guess too, with a lot of people still being at home, maybe you, um, we appreciate you taking an hour out of your day and joining us just to find out a little bit more about GWIS. It looks like some of you know a little bit about us and a lot of you don't know very much. Um, Beth Smith's gonna be the trainer today. And with that, I'm gonna turn the, tra the um, microphone over to her and let her get started because um, we don't wanna take too much of your day. But again, thanks for coming, Beth. Good afternoon, everyone, or morning, I guess, if you're in the mountain time or on the West Coast. My name is Beth Smith. I am one of the partners of GWIS, and along with Sherry, who's helping to run the webinar, she's one of the partners as well, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Um, as she said, <clears throat> thanks for answering the survey questions prior to when you registered. It helps me to know who I have on the line. Um, we do know we have a lot of you who are familiar with us somewhat, and we have a lot of you who are not familiar at all, and then we do have some of you who are familiar. So I'm going to try to be as thorough as I can in the hour that I have, but like Sherry said, we are recording this, and we are always available for questions at any time. We're going to put our emails in the chat box so you can reach out to us if needed. Um, before we get started though, I wanted to, to begin with a question for all of you. And that question is simply, what is the biggest challenge you face when working with family child care providers? If you will type that in the question box, your answer, um, Sherry's going to unmute herself just for a second here and we'll read off some of your responses. So your biggest challenge when working with family child care providers. Also, um, I'm assuming we've had one notice already that someone can't hear. You do have to pick, select your audio method when you come on in order to be able to hear, picking either the computer or dialing in with your telephone. So we don't have any questions yet, but just take your time. And the handouts, if you did not have a chance to download that, those, we will be sending those to you later with a, um, in a follow-up. Okay, finding a time that works for them. Navigating technology. <laughs> we get that one. <laughs> yeah. um, is there a slideshow? There, there's not for this, but there is, what, how Beth's gonna organize this webinar, she's gonna tell you where you can find that document on our site. Uh, utilizing curriculum to lesson plan them having the time to read documents. Encourage intonation practice and not getting through the day practices. Not confident that they can use a curriculum. That's a good one. Yeah. Those are all good. It seems like that's what we got right now, Beth. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm going to keep on moving. Um, those are all challenges that we have heard on our end as well, and a lot of the reason that we created GWIS back in 2012. Um, the original reason behind this company and what we do, all of what we do, is to help family child care providers to be the best that they can be. And um, we do have providers in programs that have small centers that use GWIS, but when we designed it, we originally designed it for use in a home setting, and that was totally intentional. So the way this webinar is gonna work today is I'm gonna go into a document that we've created specifically for you, quality specialists, coaches, mentors, people that work with providers, and it has a wealth of information in there about GWIS and how everything we do, not just the curriculum, but everything we do is built around the idea that curriculum shouldn't be scary. It's important. And what we view GWIS as is the foundation upon which a provider can build and enhance and adapt and individualize a curriculum to meet the needs of their group. Um, this is not an end-all. We are not a box of things. 
We are not craft projects. We are not worksheets. Um, GWiz is hands-on and exploratory, and I'm going to show you that when we delve into an actual teaching guide. Look at how we help providers connect activities to developmental areas. Look at how we help providers ask open-ended questions. Look at how we help providers adapt for different developmental levels. So we're going to explore all of that. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to go under the YG Wiz tab. And we're going to go right down here to information for quality specialists. We created this page specifically for you. Everything on here are, is available regardless of whether you're a customer or not a customer. But this page was built specifically to give you the information that you need about GWiz so that you can then help providers who are maybe using our curriculum. So I'm going to go into this new booklet that we just created. It's a PDF. Um, someone who just mentioned a slideshow, this would be a great thing to print out. It is one of the handouts that's available currently to the right-hand side in the toolbar, um, but you can always find it here. It lives on our website. And this booklet explains a lot about who GWiz is. And because we have a lot of you on here that may or may not be familiar with GWiz and how we do what we do, I'm going to go through here because it also ties to a lot of our components. Um, this page is just an inter introduction. And then this talks about how we support providers. GWiz is not just the curriculum, all right? We also have something called the GWiz cohort. And I'm going to explain what that is in just a sec second. In addition to that, we have a ton of free resources available on our website, which we are constantly adding to. For instance, when COVID-19 hit, we created a booklet called Social Distancing Can Be Fun. And what it is is a bunch of activities that providers can do inside, outside, that require children actually to have social distance because their games they're going to play or activities they're going to do where there's naturally some distance between them. Um, those are the kind of things because we are a digital company and everything that we provide lives on our website that we can do very easily. So it's not just that we're a curriculum company, we are much more than that. Our cohort is our training aspect because we know that Providers need training on the curriculum, but they also can benefit from training on other topics related to early childhood education. And so what we do is once a month or sometimes even twice a month, we do webinars for providers in the evening that are free, um, that are either an overview of our curriculum for those people who want to know more about it or who need to get started and need to know how to use the components, or we just did one about using household materials as teaching materials. We've done one about questioning techniques and asking open-ended questions. And once we record those, we post them on our website as well as our YouTube channel. Each contains a post assessment that they must complete in order to access a link to download their certificate. Um, the questions are not hard, but it just is our way of saying, hey, you watch the webinar now, answer these questions, and once you answer them, then you can access the certificate. Um, in Pennsylvania, those are part of the PD registry, so in Pennsylvania, they can get hours for doing that. Um, we have not gone to other states yet. That literally is a very recent um, thing that has happened. But also, to support you, all of those webinars, like the Why Behind Experiences and Exploring Diversity, if you watch them and you're like, this is great, I would love to have the PowerPoint so I can do this with my providers, if you email me, I will send you the PowerPoint and you can use it. Um, we want to support you as much as we want to support them because we know it's, 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 we're all in this together, right? We all have to support one another. So that's our cohort. And I'll show you where that lives on our website. So we're going to talk about why GWiz. Um, the biggest thing about why GWiz that we hear from customers and quality specialists and coaches and mentors of those using the curriculum is that we write it for all ages. Our lesson plans include activities for everything from an infant to a school age child. And we're going to look at the, at the lesson plans and I'll show you how we accomplish that goal. We also build, like I said, the open-ended questions into the curriculum itself. For every experience that there is, there are open-ended questions that go with it. The only exception are the infants. And the reason is, our goal is to help expose those providers to what an open-ended question is and why they're important as they read through the lesson plan so that hopefully then during the rest of their day and other activities that they plan and free play, 
they will begin asking open-ended questions on their own. And we know that the majority of the providers out there are evaluated using either the class or the Fickers. And so this is a big part of that. This is a big part of building that back and forth conversation and also taking children beyond a simple yes and no, red, blue, green answer um, to more in-depth thinking. We also in our lesson plans use picture codes to connect every experience we do to developmental areas. There are 10 developmental areas incorporated in the GWIS curriculum, and we use picture codes to help those providers connect those areas to the actual activities. We take that a step further in our lesson plans where we have a chart that then connects each activity to the specific learning indicators or skills that each activity is addressing. And so those are the things that we would then link to, to say your state alignment chart. I will show you what that looks like when we go into a teaching guide. Um, design for a home, not a center. We use things you have around the house, clothes baskets, blankets, cardboard boxes, plastic bowls. Um, this webinar I just did about household materials as teaching materials is everything we do in GWIS. We know that providers don't have a lot of time to go out and buy things, nor do they have a lot of extra cash. And so we try to use the things they have on hand. Um, we built this on solid research. There is an entire section in our user's guide about the research we looked at when we built GWIS, and I continue to add to that. As new research comes out about family child care and, for instance, family child networks or those types of things, we build that into what we do and add that to the research behind what we're all about at GWIS. We include tools within the curriculum itself to help providers individualize because we know that's very important. Everything from our observe and reflect grid to our individualization web to our customized individualized lesson planning form, which I will show you all three of those things, um, they're designed to help the providers individualize the curriculum and make it their own, make it adapted to each individual child. Um, we talked about the webinar training that's included, not just for our customers, but for any provider. And when we talk about assessment, this always comes up. Is there an assessment that goes along with GWIS? Short answer, no. Long answer, that's because there, we chose not to do it that way. When we built GWIS, I looked at all the formal assessments or a lot of the formal assessments that are out there that providers use, like teaching strategies, gold, ages and stages, ounce scale, there's so many of them. But I looked at them and I looked at the skills they're looking at and I looked at what we're doing and it was very obvious to me, if we're covering all 10 developmental areas for all of these different ages, no matter what we're doing in GWIS, the children should be doing quite well in any of these formal assessments. And it's come to be very true. Um, there's a provider in Ohio, for instance, that I know that I've spoken with who's a five-star provider, the highest she can go. And she uses Teaching Strategies Gold with GWIS, and she finds that it works quite well. Um, it's been a great fit for her. So it, the answer was, we was like, well, why would we re want to reinvent the wheel? If you look at a lot of these assessments, they're very similar in what they're looking at, so why do it again? And so that's why we chose not to do that. Instead, we focused on what we're calling the authentic assessment, meaning the anecdotal notes, the individualization web, customizing the activities, um, are all about my week reports, things that you can add to a portfolio to keep a running record of a child's development. I'm gonna stop right there for one second and see if I have any questions about anything I've covered so far before we talk about the components that we have available to help providers learn more about not just GWIS, but also the learning environment, family involvement, linguistic and cultural differences, et cetera. Um. If you can hear me from time to time, if there's anything I need to share with you, it may be in the chat box. So you may have to open that in order to see it. And um, sorry, but th there's a couple of people that can't hear, but my problem is that I, I can send them messages, but they can't hear. You have to select your method of listening, either your phone or your computer. Okay, let's see what we got here. Don't have anything yet. Um, Beth, you want to repeat just what you were asking them to kind of... Oh, I just want to know if anybody had any questions, and if not, that's fine. We're going to keep on moving because okay. I know we have no a very questions. short window, so, okay. 
Thanks. All right, so GWIZ again is more than just what we do in the curriculum. Um, we have our user's guide and this is divided into all these different sections here. I'm going to actually take you into the user's guide and show you as particularly like the section on anecdotal notes um, and individualizing and also the section on cultural and linguistic responsiveness and um, disabilities. But this is a document that's available again to anyone, not just a GWIZ customer. We also have a guide about the learning environment in GWIZ. This is all about their role in the environment. Even simple things like, you know, don't be on your phone. I mean, sometimes we need to be reminded that we need to be present. And so, you know, letting parents know there are certain times in the day, for instance, that you'll respond to text messages or emails, but you're not going to have your phone in your hand 24-7 because that's not what the children need. Um, and then there's another booklet on parent and family engagement with GWIZ. These three booklets are all available on our website to anyone at any time. They also all live on this page I'm on right now for quality specialists. And this is the biggie. So a curriculum is only worthwhile if it is used. And so the reason that we hear from providers that they use GWIZ is that it's easy to use and it's flexible and they feel like they can make it their own. Um, it's not so standardized that they feel like they can't adapt, modify, add to, which is exactly what we want them to do. Um, that they feel that they're meeting, they feel good knowing that they're addressing all the 10 developmental areas. They also feel good knowing that they're meeting their state standards and national standards. Um, GWIZ is aligned with all the state standards as well as the Head Start Early Learning Performance Outcomes. I think I said that right. Um, we also include tools to help them engage families and parents. And the reason they like it the most is it's written just for them. They, we have heard over and over again from shows we've been at, like the NAFCC show, to conversations on the phone with quality specialists or providers themselves, that they finally feel like somebody cared enough to create a curriculum just for family child care. And they didn't have to buy something that was written for preschool and then try to adapt it to family child care. Um, we actually have the opposite happen. We have people who are small centers who buy it and adapt it for center use, which is, which is interesting. So we're going to talk about our utilization checklist. That's a big part of this webinar. This came about fairly recently um, because we wanted you as a quality specialist to be able to walk into a provider's home to observe and know what you should see, what you should hear, what you should ask, what you should look for when you are there to know if they are in fact using GWIZ. We know for a fact that there are providers, and I'm sure you do too, that need to choose a curriculum if you're in a state, say, where a curriculum is required. They check a box and say, I'm going to use this or I'm using this. But then when you go in there, it's like, well, how do I know if they're actually using it? So we're going to go through the utilization checklist that we created that you can take with you when you go to visit so that you can ask the right questions, you can look for the right things, and you'll know if that provider is, in fact, using GWIS. And if, there is, if they are not, there's a page on the back of that, the last page that can be printed where you can check boxes and say, I want you to go back and read the user's guide, or I want you to read the, the guide on family involvement, or I think you need to do this section um, on uh, linguistic responsiveness. It gives you a tool that you would hand to the provider to say, these are the things you need to go back and you need to look at because you're using it, but you're not using it to its fullest. So it gives you a tool to help you let the providers know what they need to do. So the 10 developmental areas that GWIZ addresses and those picture codes that I just mentioned earlier are these listed right here. So, for instance, when you see the speech bubble in the GWIS lesson plans, you know that the experience is language development. If a provider sees the question mark, they know that they're addressing logic and reasoning. So this is what it looks like in an actual experience with from the GWIS curriculum. Um, this was one taken from a, an experience we or a, one of our units called experimenting with movement. So up here you'll see a cumulative list of areas. This is language development, logic and reasoning, approaches to learning, physical development and health, science knowledge, and social and emotional, okay? Those are the areas of development that if they do this one experience, they will address. 
this is a big point and we do a whole webinar on this the why behind experiences because I always say to providers in doing training if you do not know why you're doing something you probably should not be doing it in the GWIS curriculum you will never see an experience that says science or an experience that says art or experience that says physical development because within one experience you're actually addressing many different developmental areas in this case six okay so then we list the materials they need anything in red just means they might need a little extra time to find it and then this walks it walks them through what the experience is all about big point here in the first bullet is the why we talk about the why we talk about what the children are going to learn we talk about whether or not they might need to adapt it for different developmental levels in this case this one gives them suggestions and then what they can do is they can read all the different adaptations we have. And I say to them when I do training, think about each individual child that you have in your program and think about which way would work best for them. Or do you need to have another way to adapt it for that particular individual child? We have a documentation piece called our customized individualized lesson plan where they would then take those adaptations and they would write them on there to document because that is something that we know in some states to get to level five they must do so that gives them a tool to do just that and then here you'll also see questions to spur thinking again the open-ended questions what happened when you made the baking sheet steeper why do you think that happened engaging them in those conversations getting those conversations started and encouraging them to think so this is an example of one of the experiences that might be part of the GWIS curriculum in any of the units that we would do. Um, you will always see these picture codes at the top. You will in most cases see this, but not necessarily because some do not need levels and adaptations for different levels, but that doesn't mean obviously that the provider isn't going to need to do those adaptations. Um, does anyone have any questions about how we lay out the experiences within the GWIS curriculum in terms of the picture codes or the adaptations? Take a few minutes and um, if you're using a headset and you want to raise your hand and I can unmute you if you'd like to ask the question. We can try this if you're using a headset with a microphone. If not, you need to type it in. <laughs> Um, no hands raised, so give you a few more minutes to get anything typed in. Um, don't have anything yet, Beth. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to keep on moving. All right. So the components that are included in the curriculum, I just want to touch on these because a lot of people are not familiar at all with what we do. First of all, there are two teaching guides that include, like I said, the activities for all ages from infants through school age. We're gonna look at a teaching guide, by the way. The first unit each month has a story prop. The second has a teaching tool. They each have a materials list, a letters and literacy booklet, add an enhanced printable puppet, and then of course the free webinar training. Um, the parents, which are also available in English and Spanish, include our family letter, our digital family notes, and all bit week report and then the components for children are listed over here. And we're gonna look at those components in just a second. All right, so somebody mentioned tech, right? And tech can be challenging, we know that. We have walked many a person through step-by-step -step how to access the curriculum, how to download it, how to save it. Um, that is part of what we do when we do our Intro to GWIS training. Um, we're actually getting ready to record a brand new, this is how you get to the curriculum video, and we use YouTube a lot for short videos, um, but it's actually very simple once they learn how to do it. They sign in, they access it, they download it and save it to their computer. They can choose to print or not print. There are very few components, other than maybe the story props, the teaching tool, or the puppet, that actually need to be printed. If they just want to view their lesson plans on their computer, they can certainly do that. Um, and our family letter is a digital, it's a PDF, so it can e be emailed, so they don't even need to print it out if they don't want to. Our digital family notes are actually like a J they're a JPEG file, so they're like a photo that can be texted. Um, but we walk them through that, and I'll show you the document we have. And then this is just some um, questions that are very common that we hear from people like yourself uh, that will probably be very helpful to read through. I'm not going to 
go into reading all of that right now. You certainly can read it on your own. We've also priced it extremely inexpensive on purpose. Uh, we knew that family providers did not have a lot of money to spend on curriculum. We wanted it to fit in their budget and not be something that was a stretch. So we've tried to keep the price very economical. Um, we have some quality specialists that are using uh, QI grants or stipends to cover the cost of GWIS for their providers. If that's something that would be of interest or you want to investigate, um, Sherry's the person to reach out to. Here is her email right here that you can reach out to her because she can help set that up. Each provider in that case would have their own individual subscription, but she would divvy out the money basically to pay for it. So um, that's something you can definitely cover with Sherry. So this document is again a handout that you are welcome to print out and share with others in your agency, but I'm gonna get out of here right now. And I wanna show you, if you scroll down here, here's the user's guide, here's the parent and family involvement booklet, Here's the learning environment in GWIS. Um, and then what we're gonna do after this is over is we are going to, at the very bottom here, we'll put a another um, component, which is gonna be this recorded webinar. You can always use the link that you used when you signed up to watch it again if you would like, but we're gonna put it here as well. Um, I just wanted to show you what was on this page before I go into the user's guide. Okay, so the user's guide is like our training manual. When I do my intro to GWIS training for providers, this is what I go through. We spend a lot of time in here, which we are not going to do. Um, you can certainly go through here at your leisure, but I wanna show you a couple of sections in this guide, one of which is about individualization and authentic assessment. So I'm gonna just scoot past all of this very quickly. This is also an important one about modeling language and questioning. It links to some of our webinars as well and talks about the cohort. And here we go. So this section talks about the five-step approach we use in GWIS to individualize, which is observe, reflect, plan, do, and reflect again. And a lot of times there are a lot of books and things that have all this information, but they don't actually give them the tools to do so. So what we did is we created tools to help them do individualization. And so I'm gonna scroll quickly through that. This explains to them what an anecdotal note is, and I go into a great detail about this when we do training, um, about what it is, about how you collect anecdotal notes, about why they're important, and then what a reflection is, what it is, how it's different from an anecdotal note, and why it's important. And then we have a tool, two tools, the observe and reflect grid, the individualization web, and now our new one, the customized individualized lesson planning sheet. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you, particularly in this document, the um, observe and reflect grid. So here it is, whoops. Um, anyone can access this document, by the way, you don't have to be a customer. They can print this page out. They can record their anecdotal note or observation here. Then after it's done, they can do their reflection. They can talk about the developmental areas that they're gonna to plan to address based on what they've observed and what they've reflected upon. Then we give them a sample, okay? So what it might look like when it's filled out. We do the same thing with our individualization web. Now, if they're a customer, each one of our units has a specific individualization web that has this part already filled out for them, and then they can use this. This can be used to individualize a unit based on a child's interests and integrate their interests into a unit. It can be used to address a specific developmental area that they're working on or a special need. There are so many different ways you can use the individualization web. And then again, we give them one that's filled out so they can get an idea of how it might look, okay? So these are tools we provide to help them do their individualizations and their assessments. Um, this talks about what we talked about earlier regarding standardized assessments. And then this section goes into all the developmental areas because we think it's really important that they understand all the developmental areas that are part of GWIS. So in, for each area of development, we have what it is, the program symbol we use, and then what it might look like for different ages. And there are 10 pages of this. So I'm not gonna scroll through all 10 pages. 
Um, the other section in this document that I would encourage you to look at is the section on cultural and linguistic um, differences and families. Let me scroll through. If you just hold on one second, I can't see my toolbar. Whenever I have my go to webinar toolbar, it kind of covers it up. So bear with me. I hope I don't make anybody dizzy. Um, I should be able to grab it here in just a second. All right, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so this is a section we have in here regarding, oh, I want to stop right there. I forgot about the indicators. Remember I mentioned earlier that we have the 10 developmental areas which we use the picture codes for, but we also have more specific skills. That's what these are, the learning indicators. In the back of the lesson plan book, there's a grid by activity that shows what specific skills they're addressing as they do the activity. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get into the teaching guide. Um, but I want you to know that the details on what each one of those means are in the user's guide. And that's one of the things on the utilization checklist is to make sure they understand that. All right, so let me go here. This is the whole section on the research, the philosophy, and more that you can certainly peruse at your leisure. It goes on and on and on. And then we talk about meeting all the needs of all children. So in here we talk about cultural responsiveness and GWE. We talk about how they can do that with the different steps to take to make sure that their program is culturally responsive. We do, we have a webinar called Exploring Diversity that's built upon that. There's a printable here, examples of questions to ask families that they can print out as they enroll new families or maybe even existing ones that they don't know the answers to these questions. Then there's an all about my weekend report. This is yet another communication tool. They can, oftentimes we have reports going from the provider home, but very rarely from home to provider. So the idea behind this is you would give it to a parent or guardian on Friday and they would bring it back on Monday. And it's just to give the provider a heads up about that weekend because Mondays can be tricky, you know, depending on how the weekend went. Did they nap? Did they not nap? Did they go, uh, you know, away? Did they stay home? Uh, all those kinds of things. So it is available also if you scroll down in Spanish. And again, this is a component that's available in this booklet to anybody, not just, um, not just customers. And then this talks about linguistic responsiveness and how they can incorporate other languages into their program. Um, I'm not going to spend more time in here. I just want you to know that all of this is available within the user's guide itself, and it's available to anybody whether they're a customer or not. Okay, so I'm going to get out of that book. I'm still on your quality specialist page. There's a ton of information in here, including some printables that they can use with parents, uh, parents and family engagement. This one, again, is about their role in the learning environment. I encourage you to take time to look through that. And then we're going to look at this, the utilization checklist. Okay. So let's say you have a provider who's using the GWIS curriculum and you're going in to do your observations and you want to make sure they're actually using it. So the first section here is do you observe? And it provides you with area down here to add your notes. For instance, do you observe materials in the learning centers, activity centers that reflect the current unit? So for instance, right now, I think we're doing a unit on the pond. Nope, right now we're in the backyard. So you know, do, do you see things in the different learning centers that reflect the unit that they're doing? And we have something called our add and enhance, which is a list of things that they can add to different areas to help them do just that. Um, do you observe the provider engaging with children while they participate in child-directed experiences? Not by leading, but by asking questions and engaging in conversations. Again, built into the curriculum. A lot of those um, experiences in the GWIS curriculum are child-directed. The provider sets up the learning environment and the children take it in any direction they want, but that does not mean they just, you know, get on their phone and check out Instagram. <laughs> they should be engaging with the children. Um, you know, do they have a copy of the teaching guide for the current unit? Is it on their computer? Is it printed out? Where is it? Can I see it? Um, you should be able to ask that question and they should be able to provide that for you. 
Are they involved in a whole group experience? We have our whole group experiences in GWIS called Exploring Together. We'll look at that when we look at the teaching guide. Um, those are whole group experiences. Are, you know, are they doing that? Are they moving? Are they exploring? They're not a circle time where she should be talking or he should be talking the whole time and the children are just listening. The children should be actively engaged in learning during Exploring Together as well. Um, is the provider setting up the environment for child-directed experiences where the children are making choices? Again, a lot of the experiences that we provide are open-ended. The children take it in different directions. Is that happening? Um, are there a mix of experiences for all areas of development? If they're using GWIS, there should be. And is the provider adapting and modifying a single experience to, experience to meet the unique developmental levels of each child? We get them started for some experiences, but they should be doing that on their own. And we're, our goal is that because we do it for some, that if they feel like they need to do it for others, they'll automatically start doing that. So those are just a few things to observe in the checklist. Then we go on to the next page, which is, do you hear? We built the open-ended questions into the lesson plans on purpose. Do you hear the provider asking those questions? Um, are the children being invited to share their ideas and their thoughts? Do you hear songs and rhymes and stories? Because we build a lot of those in there too. And is there a lot of back and forth conversation while they're engaged in experiences? Not just ones that are involving the provider, but even the child free choice experiences, free play experiences, you know, is the provider engaging with the children? And here are some questions to ask. What is the name of the unit you're implementing? What do those picture codes mean? They should know that, especially if they've attended our Introduction to DWIS webinar, which is always available on our YouTube channel and on our website. Um, how does it meet the needs of your mixed age group? They should be able to explain that to you. What materials did you add to enhance the unit? They should be able to answer that as well. Which ones, which activities have the children enjoyed? What training does GWIS provide? And have you done that training? That should be a follow-up tool. Um, what tools does GWIS have to help you individualize? They should again be able to answer that question if they've done our introduction webinar and or read through the user's guide. And what components do you use to communicate with families? Again, place to add your notes. So let's say there weren't some good answers to some of those. Here's a page you can hand to them and you can check off. I want you to go through the user's guide. This is a hot link. So if you want to just give them the PDF and they can click right there and go there, they can do that. Here's a link to the training webinars, not just on an introduction to GWIS, but all the other ones that we do. Do they need help with parent involvement? Could they not answer that question? Here you go. Link to that document as well. Maybe you see them on their phone when they shouldn't be, or maybe they're not engaging with children as they should be, or maybe they're not adding to the environment the way that you know you would like to see. Again, another link to that document as well. And we're here. So if they ha they say, well, I just don't understand how to do this, or I don't understand how to do that, or I can't find the introduction to GWIS webinar, they can always email us at customer service and we will answer them and point them in the right direction. So this is a tool you can use if you go in for that observation, if you ask those questions, if you listen and you observe and you're not like seeing or hearing what you think you should be, then this is a tool you can use to say, hey, I think you might want to go back and refresh yourself on these components. Um, this is a really important piece that we created because we felt like there needed to be a tool for you, to, especially those of you who may be using grant money or stimulus money or stipend money to help pay for this for someone. Obviously, you do not want to pay for a curriculum that's not being used or used properly. So that is why we created this document. Um, I'd like to pause just for a second right there and see if anybody has any questions regarding this utilization checklist, how you would use it, even just your thoughts off the top of your head about, yeah, that would be really helpful or I don't know that I would really be able to use that. Um, we love feedback at GWIS, so anything you have to share or questions you have, I would love to take those at this time. Anything even from uh, before Beth went through the utilization um, checklist, anything that you have questions about? There was a question about how will they know the theme before arriving. Now, we do want to point out all of this is online, so nothing is shipped to the provider. She needs to, you know, access the material online and download and print. 
Uh, and we do post the outline for the year, so that way you know the themes well in advance. And I'll show you that when we leave here. I'll go there next and show you that before we go into a lesson plan. If you have questions after the webinar is over, you can always send them to us direct. And in a few minutes, I will, in the um, chat box, put in um, Beth's email and my email. Okay. I think the checklist utilization tool is a great way to hold providers accountable. Thanks. That was exactly our goal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Nothing else yet, but okay, perfect. Thanks. All right, so I'm right here right now under the quality specialist tab, but I'm going to go to our products. And if you go right here to the curriculum outline, our 2019 20 outline is here, and our 2021 outline is there. And it's just a PDF, so if you click the image, it'll open up, and you would be more than welcome to print that out or download it and save it. And then you should know specifically not just what unit but the specific topics and things that will be covered under that unit. Um, I'm going to go over here to this tab called GWE customers. When a person is a customer of GWE, gee whiz, um, they should be logged in to access the curriculum unless they printed it out. So if you go in to observe someone, first thing is they should be able to show you how they log in to get to the curriculum. If they can't do that, then there's a serious issue. This would say sign in, but I've already signed in, so it says sign out, and this tab would not exist if they weren't signed in. Then you go over here to this month's units, and we literally just posted our June units. What we've started doing is a very short overview of the units, what they're gonna be about, things they might wanna start collecting now. We usually post that around the 20th of the month prior. And this is a really important point. With GWIZ, we post our units on the 20th, like yesterday, for the month prior. So the June units just were posted yesterday and they will stay up until the beginning of July and then they will be removed. Right now our May units are still up because obviously we're in the month of May and they will stay up till the beginning of June and then they will be removed. So we tell people when we do our training, you need to download and save these, not just your computer, but you should also back them up to a flash drive, an external hard drive, a cloud, wherever, just in case something happens to your computer. And the reason they don't live on our computer, on our site forever, which you'll see very quickly, there's a heavy graphic piece to this puzzle. And if we kept them all up, the website would be so slow, it would probably crash. So this is the units for June. I'm just going to pick the um, the first one is about the beach. The second one is called Balls, Blankets, and Boxes. So I'm, I'm just going to go in there. You'll see English files and Spanish files. And I know it's going to come up. Is the teacher's guide available in Spanish? Not yet. We have yet to find a way to easily translate these 30-some page documents with not just text but images quickly and efficiently but we have not given up we just haven't figured out how to do it yet uh, we do have a quality specialist in california who's working with a cohort of spanish speaking providers who are using gwiz and they actually get together and they go through the lesson plan books together even though they're in english and they discuss them in spanish and that seems to be working really well for her and for the group so as a, as an aside um, but I'm going to go in here to the English files, and this is exactly what a provider would do. We have a step-by-step -step document I will show you that explains to providers how to access the files when they're new. And when they first join GWIZ, an email will immediately go to them that has in the email the user's guide and a link to the step-by-step -step document so they know how to access the files. Um, it automatically goes out. And then I think the next day they get an email that includes a link to the video um, and introduction to GWIZ so they can watch that as well. But I'm going to go into the teaching guide. And every teaching guide starts with the same thing. It has an introduction to the unit. It has any tips that they may need to, like here's a link to the um, post office where you can order free boxes and they'll have them shipped directly to your door things they might want to talk to parents and guardians about or things to collect and then an just a table of contents and we always always have this right here so if they forgot what 
this symbol means, they can always turn to two, page two of their user's guide and look it up. This means it's gross motor, this means it can or should be done outside, and this is character education. We build character education into the curriculum. Honesty, respect, responsibility, and kindness are the four characteristics that we build in. So if you see this symbol, you know it has something to do with one of those areas of character education. This page is a grid that some of the providers will print out and display for parents or guardians to let them know what's planned for the next 10 days. You will notice nothing is dated. Um, we just do 10 days and we know we want providers to maybe have a day. They don't do GWIS and they do their own thing. Um, so nothing is dated, no holidays and seasonal things tied into the curriculum in any way. We give those as special freebies in a separate section. So those that want to do that can do that. Those that do not want to don't have to. So it's not written into the curriculum. And then here are the school age experiences. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just go through one day. I wanted to show you what one day of GWIS looks like. Again, no dates, you have your unit, you have your focus, and this is a cumulative list of developmental areas that providers will address if they do all the things we have planned for the day. So social and emotional, language, physical development and health, approaches to learning, social studies knowledge, science knowledge, creative arts, uh, literacy knowledge, and logic and reasoning. We have a health and safety tip every day, we have a teaching tip every day, and we have a transition idea every day. Then here are words that we want the provider to engage in to use when engaging in conversations with children. And then these are some other ways that she, she or she can model language throughout the day. We believe modeling language is very important. We believe that using words in conversation is a meaningful way for children to understand what those words mean, okay? Then this is our exploring together. Remember I said it's not a time when she's just gonna be or he's just gonna be chattering on and the children are gonna be sitting there looking. No, 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 no. This is, a, this is a time when we're gonna be exploring and engaging together. Anything in red, little preparation required to get it um, ready ahead of time. Remember the first bullet talks through the why behind it and then the steps to do the experience and then the extension. Okay, so in this case, the extension is something they can do for the entire unit, which is to count the number of pieces of mail that come. Um, it's a very meaningful way to practice counting skills. It's fun to see what day you get a whole lot of mail, what day you don't get a whole lot of mail, and then they can even graph that. Um, here are your questions right here that go with this exploring together experience. And then we go on to the second part of the day. The pink boxes are small group experiences and they may or may not involve the, the provider as uh, any active role or more of a engaging, asking questions type role. This one has levels for different developmental levels where they're gonna try to figure out, given a bunch of different boxes and a bunch of different things, what they can fit inside. And this is a box called box artist, which they're gonna use those boxes and then they can do whatever they want with them. And then the purple is for the infants. We provide an experience for infants every day. It does not mean that toddlers or twos or others can't join in. It just means that we provide something for infants. We do tummy time. We do ideas to incorporate during diapering, lots of songs, lots of rhymes, um, clapping, clapping songs, all those kinds of things are part of the infant experience. Some very simple art where they might be painting with bath poofs or, um, using uh, contact paper and sticking things on it, a sensory bag, sensory bottles, all those kinds of things. So that's one example of an experience within the GWIS curriculum. And the lesson plan book would go on for 10 days like this. And then after those 10 days, we have six school age experiences, each of which can be do done for more than one day. Um, we have a book list so they can gather or purchase books or go to the library that relate to the unit that we're doing. Um, but before I go, and I wanted to scroll ahead and show you that chart that has a specific skills. Before I do that, I wanted to see if anybody had any questions about the way the lesson plans are lined out, how we use these picture codes to connect it to the developmental areas. Any questions? So when you're going in, you should see a book that looks like this, either in a digital format like this on a computer, a tablet, phone, or in a printed version. Um, I do have one comment, which um, I think might be beneficial for a lot, if that this person is a provider specialist who conducts speakers, and that she would use some of the components in the GWIS to get um, 
the providers on the right track, that it would be helpful. So she was interested in using those and all other than the teacher guide, which Beth has shown you, everything else is free that she's shown you up until this point. So if you need to download those uh, pieces to use, they're there. Um, let's see. And then there's been several questions, not about the layout of the day, Beth, but about certificates. And afterwards, we can address that um, if people need certificates for this webinar. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this will be recorded as well. So you can always come back to it and you're welcome to share the recording with others in your agency maybe that couldn't attend today uh, live um, because we just want as many people as possible to know who we are and what we do, especially if you have providers using GWIS, it's really important that you know what they should be doing. Um, I'm going to scroll really quickly right now because I want to get to that chart and it is in the back of all these. So again, there's 10 days of experiences not dated that they can utilize with the children and, and we want them to add their own experiences. We want them to adapt and individualize as much as possible. I want to grab this quickly here and as we go down through here, you're going to see the school age experiences right here set up the same way and they have questions. Their questions are just a little more on the higher order thinking scale. And the things they're doing obviously are, are on a higher level as well. Um, we do include what we call make it sheets, but these are totally optional. Um, this is actually, you could set this up as a center type manipulative where they're matching the shapes of the balls and the sizes to the, to the uh, shadows. And on this one, they're actually cutting or tearing pictures from catalogs or store flyers of things that they would ship in a box and then they can dictate and you can write. These are, to oh, this is also available in English and Spanish. These are totally optional. They're not written into the lesson plans. There's only two with each unit. And sometimes it might be um, a, uh, we've done patterning strips and cards. We've done lotto games. We've done little books. The main role there is to use it as a tool to open up a conversation with the parents and guardians about what's been going on at, you know, in the program. So like, for instance, if they make this, game at, at, with you at your program, they can then take it home and they can play it with their mom, grandma, aunt, cousin, whoever. These experiences are for children who are ready to go to kindergarten or getting ready to go to kindergarten or those who are just ready to take things a little more deep in terms of letters, letter, letter sounds, words, creative writing, um, and then more advanced mathematic, mathematical concepts. And here is that chart. So for instance, we just looked at that group experience special delivery. These are the specific skills. These would be language. This is approaches to learning, social and emotional, science, logic and reasoning, social studies, math, and physical development and health that would be addressed by that one experience. So if a provider needs to know what specific skills they're addressing as they do the experiences, this is the chart they will look at. All 10 days are on this one page, and if you scroll to the next page, we have the school age experiences, okay? There's the book list I mentioned right there. And then here's preparation for the teaching tool for this unit is actually pattern strips and cards. So that's, again, a center material, manipulative, and this one also has a puppet that we use, this is Max the Mail Carrier. I will put things in the back of the guide too that might help them as they're doing different experiences. For instance, we did a unit on the farm and we're doing something with lost sheep. So I gave them a whole page of sheep that they could cut apart and tape to blocks or even cardboard boxes. And then the children could hide them and find them and count them and use them in dramatic play or use them out in the sandbox or in the yard or whatever. Um, if there's something like that that I think will be beneficial, I would just put it in the back of the teaching guide. So just remember, this is just one teaching guide. They get two of these with each unit, okay? Um, the materials list is an expansion of everything in the guide. With everything in red, they need a little extra time to gather or prepare. And then on the last page, when you talk about family involvement, this is a great way to get families involved, is simply to just tell them, I'm gonna need boxes and food cartons and different kinds of balls. Do you have any you could send in? Over here in yellow are things that they might need a little bit more time to gather, prepare, purchase. In this case, one of the snack ideas we have is for making melon balls. So they would obviously need to purchase melon and they would have to find a melon baller. 
The provider review is something they per, they do at the end of the unit to make sure that you know they take time to reflect on how it went and what they would do differently if they did it again. The add and enhance are things like I mentioned earlier. This is the tool they use to enhance the different areas, different things they can put into the different areas to enhance the unit that they're doing. So in this case, this is boxes, blankets, and balls, or balls, blankets, and boxes. These are things they could add to the different areas. The Letters and Literacy booklet is designed to be a tool they can use with, pro with children who are ready developmentally to talk about letters, letter sounds, words, and begin to um, work on connecting right, speaking to writing. Um, right now, if they have a lot of school agers, these would be very appropriate for them, but it's a way for them to take an experience we're doing like box artists and to incorporate letters and letter sounds. And it just, just, there's a handful of experiences and different ways they can do that in a meaningful way. Gee whiz does not isolate. We do not have letter of the week. We don't have letter A is this week, letter B is next week. No, 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 no. We incorporate it in a meaningful way and this is our way of doing that. So um, for instance, like here, when you're talking about packing and shipping, well, one of the things you do when you pack and you ship is you address the box to whoever it's going to. The perfect time to talk about letters, letter sounds, words in a meaningful way. Um, so that's what this tool is for and only for those children who are ready to use it. Here's the customized individualized lesson plan that I was talking about. So what they do here is it has each day with the different experiences and then you would put the children's names across the top and you would write how you're going to adapt <clears throat> or modify for each child. Now this is available as a PDF that they can print and they can write in the boxes or it's also available over here as a Word document so they can just type in the boxes. Um, that choice is theirs. The All About My Week report, which is also available in Spanish, goes home at the end of the week. It just gives the provider a way to communicate what's been going on, what their child's learning hard to do, learning to do, what they're very good at. It's a running record. If you do this every week and you keep a copy for their portfolio before you send it home, it's a running record of where they've been and where they're going. Um, there are two of these for each unit. Here's the customized individualized web for this unit that already has the unit and the concepts filled out here that we looked at, remember, in the user's guide. And then I mentioned the digital family notes. These are a JPEG, so like a photo. They can save these to their photo file and they can either be emailed or texted to the parents or guardians. This is also available in Spanish and there are two of those and the make it sheets we saw in the teaching guide. So this is one unit. The only difference between really the first unit of the month, which in this case is um, beach, I believe beach treasures, yes, is that the first unit has story, original story and story props instead of the teaching tool and puppet. That's the only difference there. Other than that, it's laid out exactly the same way, same type of experiences, all the different components are the same. Um, the only difference, like I said, are, is the story props versus the teaching tool and also the, the puppet. Now, let's say you have a new provider and they're like, I don't know how to get to the curriculum. So you would go to support. Whoops. And we email this to the new new customers. So they should have this. Under getting started with GWiz, right here is a step-by-step -step document to get them started. It has screenshots. It has arrows. It has explanations and they can always email us a customer service and we can walk them through the process. What we have found is that first and initially, the first time they do it, it might be a little challenging, but once they've done it, it becomes second nature and they don't have a problem with it. The biggest thing we have a problem with is them remembering to save the files because once we take them down, it's not easy to get them to them because they do not e email easily. They're full of graphics. So, what we would encourage you to do if you have a provider using GWiz is to just ask them, are you downloading and saving the files to your computer and backing them up to a flash drive or something else? Um, that's just for their own you know, personal, personal uh, use because obviously if they purchase it, they want to have it and they don't want to lose it. Um, I'm going to go back to the home page. 
and I will encourage you also to look under FCC tools. We have a ton of materials here for providers. This is all available to everyone, customer or not. Here's the social distancing booklet that I mentioned that has the activities to do. A lot of them are outside, games and things to play. Um, we also always have a three free day, three day sample that is free that has all the components they need to try the curriculum and see if it's a good fit for them. Um, we think that's super important. So everything that you see up here under all of these tabs, except this one, which you will not see unless you're a customer, is always available to anyone regardless of whether you're a customer or not. So um, it's right now 2.01. I would like to stop chatting for a second and see if anyone has any questions about anything we've covered. I know it's been a lot, but we wanted to make sure that you knew we were here to support you as much as we are providers, because we know it's important for them to use a curriculum that they choose and not just say, I'm, I've chosen it. Um, there was one question, Beth, while you were going through. Yes, there are 20 days of activities because it's two units, 10 days each. Also, uh, to point out that the recording webinars under the support tab with some of the training we've done, if they say that they have participated in some of those webinars, there is an assessment after the webinar that um, they need to complete, and then they will be sent a certificate of attendance after they complete that assessment. So even if they say they did it, you actually could ask to see that certificate of attendance, which um, and it's not the assessment is not that difficult, but it's just did you do it? Did you really watch the video and or watch the webinar and go through the training? Um, and I've yeah, got a couple of there, messages. Oh, excuse me to get there, Sherry, that was a very good point to get there. Support and then webinar training video version two, and all of them, including this one, which we just posted and we just did an introduction to GWiz, live there. So um, it'll it'll always be available to them. We also have a YouTube channel where we post it as well. Sorry, Sherry, go yeah. ahead. No, there are some videos on the homepage, but this is where the uh, training webinars uh, live and those assessment tools. Um, had a couple of messages that people need to get to meetings, but we do want to thank you so much. Don't have any other questions, but after it's over with, I've posted Beth's email, my email, and then also you can always go to customer service at gwizeducation.com and send um, a question if you have one. But we do want to thank you all for attending today. We've got people from just about everywhere. Um, so just want you to stay safe and stay healthy and Thank you again for coming. Right, and there's a short yeah. survey. If you don't mind taking a second to complete it at the end, that would be awesome. Um, I will reach out to you each individually tomorrow, probably, and I can send you a certificate that you can then put in your name and uh, that you attended this, especially if you need to have training on a curriculum to then train on the curriculum. Um, so I can certainly attach that to the email when I send it to you. So just look for an email from me, if not today, probably tomorrow. Um, and like Sherry said, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. If you have any questions, please do reach out. We're here to help. And um, everybody have a great long weekend. Thanks. Bye. Bye.